I launched my campaign by saying we change or we die, not with any pleasure, but because I've heard the emotional outpouring that you just gave voice to so perfectly for 10 years now in my constituency in Wigan. And people are looking at us and saying this is really the last chance. There is just uh, yards of abuse on social media, and it's about time that those that provide the platform took responsibility for what's on it. This has been going on a long time. There's abuse, there's hatred, and it's not only Caroline's case. There are youngsters that are committing suicide as well because of what's on social media. Now, I worked, when I was Director of Public Prosecutions, we were trying to persuade social media to take responsibility. And their response was, unless it's to do with terrorism, we're not going to do so. That has got to change now. There's no incompatibility with trying to stand up for the rights of trans people and trying to stand up for the rights of women and protecting them in safe spaces. That, that is enshrined under the Equality well, Act. And there's no plan to, that there is. to change that in any way. But what we have been talking about in this debate, and I want to take the toxicity out of this, is recognising the often long and dehumanising process that many of our trans community have to go to in order to identify as either a trans man or a trans woman. And that relates to the Gender Recognition Act and making that process less dehumanising. Saying that Israel is a racist endeavour is anti-Semitic under the IRA definitions. Which but questioning the actions of any government and saying that their policies are racist is a different story. The British government and their treatment of the Windrush generation, for example, that's a racist policy. Okay. You'd expect us to do that. As Chris Starmer, greatest Labour leader of the um, last 50 years. That's since 1970, so no Clement Attlee. Well, I'm hoping that we're about to elect her in a few weeks' time. <laughs>